Just take a look at that. Huh? That is a nice jalapeno popper wrapped in bacon. Today I'm gonna to be showing you one of my favorite appetizers to cook on game day. What I'm talking about is some bacon wrapped jalapeno poppers and these are absolutely fantastic. So it's that time of the year again, football is back. You got hockey and basketball right around the corner and you got baseball going into the postseason. And I know you're gonna want some really, really awesome appetizers for your game day. So I'm gonna be making a series of videos on my favorite appetizers that I love to make on game day. We're gonna kick this off with one of my favorites, the bacon wrapped jalapeno popper, also known as many other names. But enough talking about this stuff. Let's get into making it. So we're starting off with some jalapenos. Now, when you're looking for jalapenos for these, you wanna get yourself a nice large jalapeno. If you can't find that, you can get some small ones. It's just not gonna work as nice because the bacon is gonna probably be too big for your jalapeno. So look for a nice large size jalapeno if you can. Now, pretty simple with these. I've already washed and rinsed these off. Now, what you wanna do, just slice this thing right down the middle like that. That's all you're gonna want, something just like that. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that to all these jalapenos. All right, so we got these all sliced up. Now we just gotta de-vein and de-seed these jalapenos. And my favorite way to do that is using a spoon. So just take the spoon up top in the membrane and then just scoop out all the seeds and most of the membrane, just like that. Now I'll show you one more here. Let's go ahead right at the top cut through the membrane, and then just scoop it out like that. Then just go through, clean out some of that membrane. The seeds in the membrane are the spiciest part on the jalapeno, that's why you're gonna wanna take it out, and cause we're gonna need room for that filling. So that's that, let me go through, de-seed all these, and I'll be back. All right, and that is the last one. All right, so the next thing you're gonna need is some sort of a protein. Now, if you're like me, I know you have some awesome barbecue leftovers sitting in your freezer, whether it's pulled pork, some leftover chicken, brisket, whatever. That is the perfect option for this appetizer. So here I have some leftover brisket that I cooked. I believe this may be the Old Bay brisket that I cooked. And if you haven't seen that video, be sure to check it out because this thing came out great. Awesome flavor. But for some reason, if you don't have any leftovers in your freezer, you can always go ahead and get some ground sausage or ground pork or ground beef. Any sort of filling will be perfect in this. But I love using my leftover barbecue items for this, and that's why I'm using brisket today. Let's go ahead and get this open. Ooh, this thing smells great. Check it out. It's a delicious brisket, and this is the point end. So this is gonna be some good meat right here. So I'm just gonna go ahead and slice this up. A lot of fat in there. It's gonna be pretty good. That's a nice piece of brisket right there. Now that I got it sliced, I'm gonna go ahead and slice it the other way, just like that, into strips. Then we'll turn this sideways and go ahead, just chop this into some nice chunks. All right, now we'll do the same to this. Then into cubes. Now I got a nice pile of chopped brisket. I'm just gonna go through the knife and give it a nice fine chop. All right, that is perfect, like that. So let's get this out of the way. Now you're gonna need to get yourself a bowl and a mixer. And for the filling, we're going to start off with some cream cheese. Now I let this cream cheese sit out at room temperature for a few hours. That's really key. It's very difficult to work with cold cream cheese mixing it up. If I were you, definitely go ahead and leave it out. I usually forget to and it's not a problem. It's just a lot harder to mix it up. Then to that, I wanna add a little bit of this freshly shredded cheddar cheese. I'd say it's about a cup and a half. And then for now, I'm gonna put in about half that chopped brisket just like that. And then a sprinkle of barbecue seasoning. Now that brisket's already well seasoned, so you don't need too much extra seasoning in the mixture here. Then just go ahead, try and get this all mixed up and incorporated nicely. I have found that a stand mixer works fantastic for mixing this up, but 
I did not feel like breaking the stand mixer out for this. So I'm just gonna do this by hand. And speaking of by hand, I think it might be easier to actually use my hands for this. And this is why the room temperature cream cheese is a key component. It is so much easier to work with. So if you can remember, make sure to do that. All right, this looks pretty good. And I don't have too much brisket left, so you know what? Let's just do it all. Do it live. So we got all that brisket in here. This is gonna be a nice meaty filling. I think this amount of brisket is actually perfect for this now that I have it mixed up. I like to go more heavy on the meat with the filling compared to the cream cheese. All right, there we go. All right. Check that out, huh? Some good looking filling. So let's go ahead and get our poppers filled. All right, here's the jalapenos. Now you're just gonna wanna take your jalapeno, get a little bit of that filling in there. And the best way to do this is just use your hands. Go ahead, pack that filling in there. You want a good amount. Don't skimp on the filling. You made plenty for all these jalapeno poppers. So something like that looks pretty good. It's a nice size filled jalapeno. So I'm just gonna go ahead, go through, and I'll get all these jalapenos filled. All right, last one finished. As you can see, I do have some filling left over. Now I have 12 jalapeno halves here and I have enough filling for probably four more jalapeno halves. But if you do have some leftover filling, don't worry about it because what I like to do, I'll take that filling, put it in an oven safe container. Then you can either bake it or throw it in your smoker as another appetizer to go along with these jalapeno poppers. You can just give them some tortilla chips, dip in that filling, it'll be great. But now that these are filled, let's get them wrapped up in some bacon. Now I'm a big fan of thick cut bacon, but for something like this, you're just gonna want your classic thin cut bacon. It's just gonna cook down a lot better. It's gonna get nice and crispy, so this is what you wanna go with. Now since I was able to get some big jalapenos, I think one piece of bacon will be good for each, but a lot of times what I like to do is just give this bacon a little bit of a stretch so it'll wrap around nicely. You'll be amazed at how long you can actually stretch this bacon out. So go ahead, get your jalapeno popper, get your bacon, and just go ahead, start wrapping that right around. Just like that. Look at that beauty right there. One piece of bacon, one popper, perfect. Let's get another one. So I'm just gonna go ahead, get all these jalapenos wrapped up in bacon and I'll see you back here when I'm finished. All right, there we go. All wrapped up in the bacon. These things look great, but they just need one more thing. I like to go ahead and just sprinkle a little bit of barbecue seasoning on top of these for some added flavor. This is my homemade barbecue seasoning. You use whatever barbecue seasoning you like. I'm hoping to come out with a video soon that shows you my barbecue seasonings and how to make them. So be on the lookout for that. And there we go. These are all set, so let's get out to the smoker and get them on. All right, so I'm doing this on my pellet smoker today. I got it at 250 degrees. Get those on there, let them cook. I'm running this thing at 250 degrees. I'm probably gonna let them sit in there for an hour. I want those peppers to cook slowly. I don't want that cheese to get super melty yet. And I wanna give that bacon a chance to render down. Now after an hour, I'll go check on them, see how they're coming along. I want those peppers to start getting nice and soft. Then. I'm gonna crank the heat up to around 350 degrees probably to get that bacon nice and crispy. Now that's why we want the pellet smoker because you're able to just on a dial, crank the thing up, get your bacon nice and crispy. But enough of that, these jalapeno poppers are gonna go for about an hour, then I'm gonna go check on them. Since you're watching the video, let's get right out and check them. All right guys, one hour, 15 minutes on these poppers, check them out. These are looking very nice. See how the pepper's starting to get nice and soft? That's what we're looking for. But you can see that this bacon is just not rendered yet. So what I'm gonna do now, I'm gonna turn this thing up to 350 degrees and let these cook for another 25 minutes. So I will see you then. All right, these have been on for another 20 minutes and they are done. These things look fantastic. You can see the bacon is nice and crispy. So now what I'm gonna do is pull these off, let them rest for a little bit 
Then I'm going to get them plated. All right, these are finished. I can already see the pepper is cooked, so it'll be nice and soft. And this bacon is super crispy. See, the pepper is cooked. It's going to be nice and soft. And that bacon is nice and crispy. It's a good way to cook these things. That's why I like the pellet smoker, because you can cook it low and slow there in the beginning. Then crank up the heat and get your bacon nice and crispy. That's why I'm a big fan of the pellet smoker for this. But these things smell so good and I've been dying to give one a try, so I'm gonna do that right now. Mm -hmm. These are so good. One of my favorite recipes. I could probably eat this whole pile. So for me, they're not that spicy. Sometimes you'll get a batch of jalapenos. They are spicy, sometimes they're not. That's just how it is with jalapenos. These ones, not too spicy, but that filling is so good. You can taste the brisket and adding that barbecue seasoning on the top at the end is a very good idea. It adds a nice flavor as well. But definitely cook these for your next game day. They go perfect with a sporting event. Mm, delicious. I'm very happy that I decided to add all that brisket in there because it is so good. Sometimes it's just too much cream cheese in here. This has got so much meat. These are delicious. But I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, make sure to give it a like. I'm gonna try and make a nice little series here with some awesome recipes that I love to make when I'm watching games. So if you wanna keep up to date with those recipes, make sure to subscribe to my channel. You can do that right over here. And I'm gonna go ahead and put a link of everything I like to use down in the description below. And most importantly, get out there and smoke something good. Mm.